Hey friends, welcome to another episode of What Matters Most, the podcast of Faith Community Church. It's been a while, but we are back to our discussion on the fruit of the Spirit and nurturing godly character in our lives. I'm your host, Tabitha Kaplinger, and as we talk about kindness, I am joined by Brian Kaplinger and Brooklyn Hudson. Brian and Brooklyn, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hi, my name is Brooklyn Hudson. Uh, I just graduated from the youth um, and Tabitha invited me and I'm super excited. Woo-hoo. Well, we're glad to have you. Uh, and as Tabitha said, I'm Brian Kaplinger. Uh, I'm one of the pastors here at the church, uh, focusing in adult ministries and getting to hang out with all these awesome people. So that's that's about it. That's awesome. We are very excited to have Brooklyn. Brooklyn, you are our youngest podcast guest so far. So snaps for that. Absolutely. Actually, around our church community, we've been talking about um, creating a culture of generational leadership where no matter what age or stage of life you are at, you can have opportunity to serve and to minister to one another. So it's really important to us to have voices like Brooklyn, who she just turned 18 a couple of days ago, guys, on the graduated week. high school and all those big life things. So we're super excited to have her here today as we talk about kindness. So as we know, we've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit. And so just a little recap, um, spoiler alert, how do we develop these in our lives? That's usually what we get to at the end, but I'm going to tackle it at the beginning because we've talked about it for like four episodes now. And it is abiding in Christ, that as we abide in Christ, the Holy Spirit nurtures and cultivates this fruit of godly character in our lives. And we partner with Him to do that. And so today we are talking about kindness and this is really an interesting word. I think it's one of those words where we are like, yeah, I know what that means. I know what it means to be kind. I'm with you. I'm good. I got it. This is like one of the fruit of the spirit that we're like, I can totally check that off. Super easy. Don't ask me about patience or self-control, but kindness I got. But I think as we talk about it, we're going to see that there's maybe a little more to kindness than what we would think on a cultural Level And so as always, we like to share what the word means biblically. We're talking about the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians chapter 5. Yes, chapter 5, verse 22. I lost my (laughs) mind for a minute and couldn't remember words or numbers. But it's in Galatians chapter 5. And in that, it would be the Greek word, which I have in my notes. And we can put that Greek word in the show notes but I'm not gonna try and say that Greek word today because I don't know how to pronounce it. But what it means in the Greek, in the biblical language, is it conveys the meaning of moral goodness, integrity, and usefulness. And this is really important. And then we're gonna chat about it. It denotes the idea of action behind it. So kindness is not, being kind isn't just something that you are, it is something that you do. And I think the first question that I want you guys to jump in on is what is the difference between being nice and being kind? Because I think there is a difference. What do you guys think that difference is? Well, it's funny because I was thinking about this obviously all day today and they're gonna laugh at me, but I did jot some notes down. That's not typically me. I usually just go off the cuff. Uh, But as I was just thinking about the difference between niceness and kindness, I came across the quote. I can't remember who spoke the quote, but basically the statement was niceness centers around the expectations of others, whereas kindness centers around your expectations. That when you're nice in that regard, it's really about you're just doing this to get a, a reaction essentially from someone else versus necessarily just doing it for them out of, you know, this place of, I just want to help you. I want to love you. I want to show you uh, that you are valued and meaningful. And so I think right from the beginning, when you think about that, because I think, you know, we can't underestimate being nice. I think that's something we hope we encounter from everybody is, is a niceness where, you know, I think sometimes, you know, that smile, those type of things. They're nice gestures, uh, especially to people that you don't know. There, there's ways to really just convey. Maybe even, I thought about this, the start of kindness is niceness, but it's not the identical same thing. Yeah, I think nice, like being nice is very surface level. Um, I think kindness is rooted from a mindset and a way of thinking. It comes, it comes from 
how you treat people and how you think of people when niceness is very service level and like an action. Um, yeah, but I do agree. Like it's the beginning of kindness, but if you don't take it anywhere, it doesn't go anywhere. Right. And I like that idea that niceness is very me centered, almost self centered. It's so I can feel good. And maybe that's not our conscious, um, intention, but really at the root level, and maybe that's why it stays surface because it's more about me and feeling good and feeling like I did something nice for someone. And kindness takes us to that deeper place that is not about us. It's about the other person. I think that kindness at its core is rooted in humility, that it, it that real biblical kindness that we're talking about puts the other person First. And so one thing I thought about, and I want to get you guys' take on this, is that, you know, the, people say all the time, well, it costs you nothing to be kind, right? We've heard people say this. And I was thinking about it, and I was like, actually, I think that kindness has to cost you something to really be kindness. I don't think it costs you anything to be nice, but I think kindness costs something. So let's discuss that. Yeah, no, I mean... I would agree 100% in that because I think when you talk about nice, you're talking about the superficial things. Again, not that they don't add value or they're not important in that regard, but they're just simple things that I think everybody would agree upon. Like it's nice to smile. It's nice to wave. It's nice to hold a door for somebody. And those things are good and valuable, especially in our culture and community now. But when you're talking about kindness, you have to push past that to words like generosity and I think even servanthood to that regard, which it is going to cost you something because, and maybe I'm the lone stander here, but Mm -hmm. I don't think kindness is natural to us as humans. I I just don't think it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's so much easier for us to be in it for ourselves. And when you talk about kindness really at its root, at its core, is for others, it's it's not natural to who we are. And so you have to be willing to think about it. I think that's why it is one of the fruits of the Spirit, because God and Jesus embodied what kindness is and the way he served us ultimately at the cross. Yeah. But even beyond that, just the way that he related to people, and it really, it 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 costs a mental capacity of I have to think less about myself. Not in the sense that I'm degrading myself, but my first thought is not about what can I get from these people or this interaction that I'm about to have. It's what can I offer them? What's going to position them to be in the best place to succeed? And sometimes that's not even a word. I think sometimes we relate kindness to just speaking the right words to people, but sometimes it's just... How am I going to serve them, love them, show them this idea of kindness without ever even speaking to someone? Yeah, uh, one of my good friends shared this quote on Facebook the other day, and it really took me back and it said, um, be excluded for who you include instead of being included for who you exclude. That's good. And it's that's one of like an example of being, you know, sacrifice, like... Yeah. You have to sacrifice maybe being included in a group or you have to sacrifice being liked by somebody if that means that you have to be kind to somebody or you have to Mm -hmm. love somebody or to choose like not to do that. And so I think that as a a society, like sacrifice is like, that's something that we don't want to do. That's something that's very looked down upon. And so it's just really important to have that mindset and it's like kindness is something you have to work on and really like pray about and have it like in your heart not just like in your head that's good that's good because um thinking about what both of you said thinking about jesus and because when we talk about the fruit of the spirit these are pieces of godly character that are being nurtured in our lives so all of these are things that can be said about god god is kind And so if we are followers of Christ, if we are being made more and more into the image of Christ and becoming more and more like Christ through the process of sanctification, our big theological word of the day, then kindness is part of that because he is kind. We can't look like him if we aren't kind. And so thinking about Jesus just in scripture, because like you said, Brian, he embodied kindness. What did kindness look like for Jesus 
because when you said the quote, Brooklyn, it made me think that like Jesus was excluded by a lot of people because of who he included in his circle, because of who he was willing to go out of his way and show love and, and give value to people didn't like that. And they were very vocal about it. And so let's talk about that for like, what, how did Jesus embody kindness? When we read the scriptures, maybe what are some moments that we saw kindness that even especially that wouldn't look like how we would define kindness in our culture? Right. I think, you know, right off the get-go, like the word that comes to me is being led in that regard. I think that's critical in kindness when you see Jesus and he's always leading someone to something. And it's not necessarily what's best for him physically in that moment, but what's best for them. And probably a scripture we all know, we've heard before, it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. You know, and that word that leads us, kindness will always lead those you are kind to, to a place. And I think with Jesus, you see that so often, like the story that comes to mind to me is, you know, you even sing the song Zacchaeus, you Mm -hmm. know, and just that, that he would have been someone that probably did not receive kindness much in his life. I'm not saying never. Uh, and I think people would probably have been nice to him, but the kindness aspect of Jesus not only recognizing who he was in the moment and the fact that he had a desire to go somewhere and Jesus calling him down and ultimately going to his house and then yeah. the conversations that would lead from that is is that he took him from a place of maybe being on the fringe to someone that could receive that freedom, that salvation, that experience. And so when I think about kindness, especially as a fruit of the Spirit, it's that notion of leading somebody to a place, not for my benefit, but for theirs. And, and that can look different because I think sometimes we get this notion of kindness and we tie it to niceness. And I'm not saying be rude or disrespectful, but sometimes the kindest thing you can do is challenge somebody because it does help them move. It helps them get to a different place. Now, it has to be paired with love, and I think you can do it in a nice way. Yeah. But it's at its core, when I see Jesus, especially in kindness, it's always leading. It's leading that person to what's best for them. That's good. I always loved in the Bible where Jesus washes people's feet. Yeah. Um, that's so like humbling and kind and just like humility. Like for Christians, I feel like sometimes people can put us on these pedestals like, oh, you're too worthy or you're big and like we're all equal. And um, I saw this thing where like on in the in like on the way to youth, like these leaders are washing these kids' feet. And I'm like, that's so cool. Like that's yeah. so kind and that's so like kindness is very like unique and like rare and you can see it like you can so we are in new york and my sister like there's just like crabby people everywhere (laughs) and maddie was like i counted 14 acts of kindness so i started doing that where this guy opened the door and this guy smiled at me and they could have chosen not to like it was a choice yeah that's good it's it's choosing to look at what you can do for someone else. Like we said, to serve them, to wash their feet, maybe not literally mm-hmm. in all the places. Cause that would be weird if you just stopped in the Walmart and like wash someone's feet. But like, but having that mentality of, of serving others, that kindness at its core is that kind of servanthood that takes the time and the intentionality to choose to give a little bit, right? Cause it costs us something. It costs us maybe some status and reputation. It costs us some time. It costs us some energy and being willing to give that to others. And I also love the idea of walking around in this place that's maybe right. full of crabby people and choosing to look for kindness. Because I think sometimes we make it really hard to be kind because we're so busy looking at the unkindness in the world around us. And so it all, it makes it harder to want to give it sometimes because we're like, well, everybody else is so mean. Why do I have to be kind. Why do I have to be loving when they don't love me? And I'm, you know, well, cause Jesus, that feels like it, that should be a top, you know, reason up there, but we struggle with that. And I think having the perspective that says, I'm going to look for the good. I'm going to look for kindness around me. I think maybe motivates us to be 
kind. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think it's really good because I struggled with this for a little bit uh, early, earlier on in my Christian walk, the idea of kindness that if, you know, someone wasn't kind or respectful or whatever the case may be, and I ultimately showed kindness, was I affirming or confirming, you know, that part of them? Like just being kind to somebody would affirm whatever their attitude was, whatever the case may be for that day. And I wrestled with that. And so I almost became rigid because it was like, if you're not going to show me kindness or treat me with respect or serve me, then I'm not going to reciprocate that kindness as well. And I know that's not very Christ-like because we see all throughout Scripture where Jesus did the opposite of that. And it, and it really helped me understand that it's so much easier to be a victim than it is to serve and be yeah. a servant, especially in our culture. I mean, if you look, it's, I mean, you can be offended, upset, hurt, whatever, by anything. Um, I could be upset they don't have my favorite coffee here. You know, I mean, whatever the case may be, it's, it's horrible, right? You know, major the, problems. Let me tell you, he almost never drinks coffee, so that's why that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but, but understanding that kindness, Brooklyn, you've said it multiple times, is a choice that I make. And it's not dependent on other people. It's not dependent on the circumstances that I find myself in. It's not dependent on anything but me choosing to do that. And ultimately, when I choose that, I am exhibiting a characteristic of God. That's at its core, that's what I'm choosing to do. And so it's never about confirming someone else's actions, thoughts, ideas, whatever the case. It's just it's just treating them as someone that's worthy of love, worthy of value, and I'm going to serve them again at the end of the day in hopes that it will lead them to salvation, will lead them to freedom, because maybe my moment of kindness can be the turning corner for that person. Well, it's we, we don't get to decide which fruit we're going to display based on how other people around us are behaving or the choices they're making. Like my choice to be obedient to Jesus and his word and to live as Jesus with skin on is, doesn't get to be contingent on how other people are living around me or how they treat me. Like that's, that's not how it works because... Jesus showed us that's not how it works. And as we were talking about, it, I was thinking about the story of the woman caught in adultery, that they're ready to stone her. And that obviously she sinned. Obviously she had done something morally reprehensible for that time. Um, we won't talk about why the guy wasn't dragged out there either, but that's a different podcast for a different day. But she's out there and they're getting ready to stone her. And Jesus comes on the scene and he shows so much compassion he shows kindness to her by reaching down, getting down on her level. We don't know what he wrote in the on the ground, probably because it doesn't really matter. It wasn't for us to know. What we know is that he reached down on her level and he showed her her value. He showed her kindness. And then he said, he said, go and sin no more. He didn't affirm or approve of her behavior. His kindness had nothing to do with affirmation or tolerance. It was a compassion that helped her get up from where she was and go on and live a different kind of life. And that's what our kindness has to do. Like we said, it leads somewhere. And right. if God's kindness leads to repentance, leads to relationship with Jesus, shouldn't our kindness do the same thing? Like we want to wait until people repent and then we'll be kind to them. And it's like, no, kindness leads to repentance. That's not a lack of truth. That's not a, Jesus said really hard things to people. The woman at the well, he was also very kind and compassionate to even sit and have a conversation with this woman was so outside of what was culturally acceptable. And so it was kindness and compassion for her. And in that conversation, he told her her list of sins. Like he he was honest about, hey, here's where you have not been living the way that would honor God. And yet he did it with compassion in a way that made her go, oh, wow. Right. I want to do more. It's like he loved her right where she was, but he loved her too much to let her stay there. And I think that's what kindness does. Right. And Romans 2.4 is ultimately where we're talking about, you know, the kindness aspect. 
especially leading to salvation. And I looked it up, and I was really taken back by the message version because I think the it really kind of gives us a context of all of this in the leading aspect as well. And it says this, it says, God is kind, but he's not soft. And that was fascinating to me right there. In his kindness, he takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into radical life change. That's good. And you, when you think about that aspect, because I think sometimes when we just say it's his kindness that leads us to repentance, it leaves a lot open for people to determine. And the fact is, is yes, he is kind, he's loving, he's gracious, he serves us um, in all the ways, but that doesn't make him soft. It doesn't mean he's not going to bring truth or reality in a situation. It doesn't mean he's not going to challenge you in the areas that are not healthy in your life, but he's also not going to abandon you. He's going to take you by the hand and lead you to a place where you experience, and I love their terminology, radical life change. That it's it's not this self-help book that you can pick up and read. It's no, it's this all-encompassing that when you experience true, what I would say, godly kindness, there's a connection point that's bridged not only between you and the person that you're kind to, but for them to have an experience and maybe even a connection with God, whether they've been serving Him for their life or they have no understanding of who God is in that moment. Kindness can transcend a person's spiritual walk in that moment and get them to a place where they can be open to receive that. And I think sometimes we think kindness is this soft yeah. thing, and it's really not. It's it's actually at its core. You know, it's funny to say this. It's it's strong. It's strength. It really takes someone being willing to do the hard things to get to that place of kindness yeah. uh, that leads yeah. somebody. I definitely think people underestimate the power of kindness. I think that it's looked over and I think that it's a pride thing sometimes. Like that seems so silly. Mm-hmm. That seems so small. Like that doesn't matter. And it, it does matter and it makes a huge difference. We never we don't know what people go through when we see them at Walmart or at church or at work. We don't know and and that's like God's job to take that and do something in their lives. But it's so important to we live in, to live in a community and to know that we're not alone. Um, and to see that like other people are on our side, and that's what kindness does. It, it connects good. that bridge. That's good. And like you said, it's God's job to take it and do with it. Because I think sometimes we struggle with kindness, and I'll just talk to believers, although it probably applies to everyone, because we want to know that our kindness did something. Like I, especially when we're talking about as Christ followers trying to show kindness to those who don't believe the way we believe. It's like, well, I I will show love and kindness if I have a guarantee that I can watch it transform them. Like I will be kind when I know that they're going to receive it and come to Jesus. And like, we're nobody's Messiah. We're not the Holy Spirit. We don't do that work in people. It's our job to offer this picture of Jesus and who he is and his love and grace. And then it's his job to do with it what's going to be done. We can't, we aren't responsible for the results, but we are responsible for our choice in that moment. And so I think it's super important to make sure that we're intentional about not putting stipulations on our kindness. And I'm not talking about not using wisdom or being doormats or letting people take advantage of us because that's not kindness. That's just foolishness. But we will put stipulations on our kindness all the time in the way we speak to people in who we're willing to be kind to versus others. We we create these little compartments of kindness in our lives. And in so doing, we create these walls that actually keep people from Jesus. And if we would just kind of open the gates and go, you know what? I'm gonna show the love of Christ. I'm gonna show the kindness and I'm gonna trust that God is big enough to handle the results and to do the work in someone's heart. I'm just planting seeds. I'm planting seeds. And it made me think of when I was studying this um, that a lot of times in scripture, in Hebrew, the word for kindness is actually two parts. It's loving kindness. 
and the two go together. And so when it's translated, a lot of times in scripture, it's actually translated to just love. So when we're reading scripture and you see the word love sometimes, and you see the word kindness, they actually are tied together and they can, you could almost interchange kindness and love. Um, and I, I'm not saying that as a blanket statement in every scripture in the whole Bible. I'm just saying sometimes, but that's, to me, that's like an important tie because they would have heard this word kindness and immediately thought about the agape love of God. They would have immediately made that connection. We don't always make that connection because Brooklyn, like you said earlier, we keep it real surface level and we think we're doing something for the kingdom. Um, and and really having to go to that deeper place of that costs something. Right. And, and trusting that, it's going to pay off. I may not see the payoff. We want the payoff. We want to see the results right now. And if I don't see the results, then it was worthless and it was useless and I'm not going to make that sacrifice again. But it's like, I don't always get to see the results of my kindness. I don't always get to see the results of my humility and my love towards others. But scripture says that some plant and some water and some reap a harvest. And I have to trust that if I'm trying to be like Jesus, then maybe I'm planting Maybe I'm watering. Maybe sometimes I'll reap a harvest, but that's all his category. I don't get to make that decision. I just get to be obedient. Right. It, it's like a, a story I shared a little bit ago. Um, I was thinking about one time when I think it was Lila and I, it might not have been Lila, but uh, which is my daughter, we were together and we ran across someone who was just sitting on the side of the street asking for money. And my first thought was, I'm not giving this person money because I do not know what they're going to do with it. And of course, Lila's like, Dad, I, I think we need to offer them some money to, you know, just show them some love, some kindness, give them this. And I started to explain to her like, hey, we don't know what he's going to do. He could probably do some negative things in his life if we hand him this. And being, you know, a good little daughter <laughs> that she is, her response was, that's not our category. We're called to just be nice. We're called to love. We're called to be kind. And the results are on them. And I think too often, like what you're saying, Tabitha, is as we go into it with this idea of kindness that I need to see something from my kindness in order for me to be kind. And really, at the end of the day, it's not that's not our category. No. Our category is just to be kind because that's what God is calling us to. He's asking us to serve people with kindness and love and generosity and mercy and grace and all the words that you find in scripture and not worry about their response, not look to get a response from them or to see this dramatic life change. I mean, I would love it. And like you said, if we get to that point, it's great, but I can't go into it going, I'm going to be kind because Brooklyn, I want you to evolve into this person. I have to come into it going, I'm going to be kind because it's what's asked of me and leave the results between you and God. Right. Like we're called to be disciples of the world in this like broken world we live in. And from experience, like I feel like we put too much faith in like people, like we give them kindness and then we're so disappointed when it doesn't turn out. And I'm like, gosh, like what the heck was that for? Like, I'm not being kind anymore. Like, but that's like, it's like vertical versus horizontal. Like, don't worry about the people. Don't put your faith and your kindness in the in the result, in the product. Like it's simply between you and God and just yeah. the humility of people. Right. That's good. What's maybe a time in your life where someone showed you kindness? Like you had that personal experience of genuine kindness that maybe made a difference for you. Man, that's a good question. Now you're going to get me to really think. I know. We all have to stop and think for a moment. Awkward silence (laughs) here while we think about this. I mean, there's so many. Too. I mean, I think yeah. I've been fortunate enough that there have been people in my life all along that have shown me kindness. And one of the ones that always just comes to mind right from the beginning, I lost my grandfather not too long ago. And I think an ultimate picture of kindness was the life that he led even directed towards me because in high school growing up, they lived with us. They lived in our house and they were in the room right beside me. And, and when I say this, I... <laughs> 
I'm serious in this. I did not make their life easy. <laughs> and that was intentional on my part because I didn't like them being in the house. Um, and I wasn't serving God. I wasn't trying to serve God at that point. But every morning I would get up and they would be praying and I would hear them not only pray for me, but praying for people specifically by name. Like it wasn't this generic just prayer of blanketing everybody. I mean, they were calling people's individual names out and their prayers were not one of, this is a sinner, you need to strike them with lightning and all the fun stuff to get them right. It was God show them favor, show them grace, give them their heart's desires in a way that leads them to you. And I think for me, that's the one that stands out right now, obviously, because losing my grandfather's obviously getting me to a place where I'm remembering those moments and celebrating those moments. But I say that to say, I don't know that I am where I am today without that expression of kindness that him and my grandmother offered me. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, I had like, I've had some bad experience with teachers at school and I've had some really good ones to where I don't think that I would be here today without their compassion and their kindness. I have one teacher and she's my ag teacher and she's disconnected from the school. So I think a lot of times she gets forgotten about, but every time I walked in the door, she's smiling. And every time I needed to talk, she talked and just her generosity and kindness that she showed to me that she didn't have to. And the hours she put in that she didn't have to really moved me recently graduating. And, and I think that just, she did it out of her own good. Like she, it was her choice. Like she yeah. chose to like, it wasn't that she got paid to stay there. It wasn't that <laughs> she got paid to, you know, like she actually chose to and knew the sacrifice that That's she was good. doing it. So I'll forever be grateful for her. That's good. I was thinking of what popped in my mind and I'm straying from my own question because it is not kindness that I personally experienced, but like directly toward me. But the example I thought of is my dad um, was a pastor for 40 years and he retired about five, six years ago, something like that. But the last church that he was pastoring, um, someone broke into his pickup truck in the church parking lot and stole a box of checks out of the truck, which is a huge deal because like my parents do not make a lot of money. So if someone went on a spree writing checks, it would be a really big deal. And so, you know, he calls the police, lets them know what happened. They found the person who did it. And it was like a young single mom who was just desperate. She didn't have groceries. So my dad not only did not press charges, but he went and bought her groceries for like three weeks in a row. And because, and I, I think of that because that's kindness. It was, he could have turned around and sought justice. Like it would, it would not have been wrong to expect a consequence on her part for her actions, but he saw beyond what she did in that moment to someone who was hurting and broken and desperate in need. And he chose to instead have compassion on her and to do something to serve her that, that cost him something in a big way. And I just, he, and he's always been like that my whole life. My mom would get mad at him sometimes. Cause she'd be like, look, I know you're trying to act like Jesus, but our bank account needs you to stop. <laughs> um, uh, but then she would also say, but God was always faithful every time. But moments like that, where it's, you have every reason to not, and yet you still do. That's so Christ-like. That's so Christ-like. And I can think of moments in my own life where I was not humble and I was an arrogant 20-something who thought she knew everything and people that would come alongside with such love and bring correction. And I and and it hurts in the moment. It stings. But I look back now and see so much love and compassion and kindness that they had towards me to be willing to say the hard thing and to say it in a way that was full of kindness. Because I think sometimes we can think we're being kind, but if our motive and our method is not wrapped in love and compassion, then it loses all the kindness. And I think then it loses the impact that we wanted it to have. And so just thinking about that, like what are the times that we have an opportunity to put our own needs, our own desires, our own whatever on the back burner to benefit someone else, to say the hard thing. Because I don't know about you guys, but there'll be moments where I will feel like God will want me to say the hard thing to people. <laughs> and I have a reputation of saying the hard 
things around here, but I never want to. It's never, if, I, if it's like, I really want to say a thing to you, like I really, really want to say the thing, then I know it's not the Lord and I don't say the thing. <laughs> but the moments where I'm like, no, God, I don't want to say that. And he's like, no, you need to say it. I'm like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. And he's like, no, you need to. Those are the moments where I know I'm going to be obedient and lead. I also, and try and do it with such kindness. And I've had like in our small group, my friend Katie all the time, she makes a joke about how many times she's cried on my couch. And because we've had these hard conversations and she's like, you have said really hard things to me that really hurt my feelings in the moment. But I know that you love me and that's why you're saying them. And I think when that motive is there, then it can come out with the compassion. And obviously we're not responsible for how other people right. take and respond to and receive everything that we put out. Cause sometimes we can be absolutely loving. We can be absolutely compassionate and someone's still gonna be offended and we can't do anything about that. We cannot control that. We only control ourselves. But that kind of willingness, like my dad to say, here's someone that really could have damaged our right. situation and but I'm going to choose to just forgive them and to offer help instead. Yeah, and I would say this too if you're a leader out there, one of the ways you can show kindness because I've been the recipient of this as well is that I've made mistakes and instead of having to take the hit, those leaders above me took that hit. Mm -hmm. And they took it on themselves to you know, take the brunt of maybe other people's frustrations because of a poor choice that I've made. And now it didn't go uncorrected. They came back and with even greater kindness would correct me in the private moment, but out front to the public, they took that hit. And I mean, obviously, I think we can see that in Jesus as well, but I think even for all of us in our lives, sometimes, and I think your dad did a great job of that in that aspect is you have a right to let someone else face the consequences of their choices. But sometimes the greatest gift of kindness you can give is to take that for them um, because you are maybe more mentally prepared and ready to handle that hit than they are. And what you're ultimately doing is saving them from a much harder experience in that moment and you have the ability to then go and correct and help them grow in that moment without having to experience maybe that devastating conversation with a parent that they're just not prepared for or that other church member in your congregation or in your workplace whatever that looks like for you as a leader um, and so I'd say don't underestimate that you know I'm not saying you need to do it every time. Don't make a way for somebody every time they make yeah. a mistake. But be alert, listen to God, and sometimes be willing to take that hit for those under you because it will help them. That's good. I like that. Anyway, <laughs> I kind of also lost track of what I was going to say next. But um, thinking about just kindness and thinking about acting it out and thinking about being intentional, all of this kind of stuff that we talked about, how do we get there? What are some practical things that we can do to help us live out kindness in our day-to-day -day lives? Or, or what are some very practical ways to live out kindness? I think anything, just anything in general that we want to do to other people, we first have to do it to ourselves. So we first have to have that self-identity, that self-love, that self-kindness uh, before we try to show that to other people. Like we have to have that in our hearts. Like the mouth speaks of what the heart is full of. And so it's really important to, um, you know, be devoted and have that mindset and be sure that your heart is in the right place. Like that plank is out of your eye first before That's you try good. and help the world. That's really good. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I think simplistic, like really actionable things is, yeah, start with you know, the physical action steps that you can take that, yes, they are nice. You know, it can be sometimes simply just engaging in conversation with someone that you don't typically do. But even more than just engaging with that, really listen. You know, one of the things that I have found that's nice is when you just give a little bit of time for somebody, but kindness is when you start to listen and then you can go back and check in on them. So like when you have a conversation with somebody that, you're going to have multiple interactions with remembering certain things about them to bring back up, um, to show that there is a genuine 
you know, care for them. Right. Because some of us may not be in the financial area where we can buy groceries for three weeks or we right. can give them a hundred dollar yeah. bill. Like it doesn't have to be like money. It can be yeah. time. It can be a conversation, a smile, a hug, a text, like <laughs> yeah, a note, good. like anything like that. It doesn't have to be money. Yeah. It, it, it can. And even sometimes just genuinely like Brian, checking in on someone, um, taking the time to show them that they are valued and thought about and that you care about them um, can be a huge deal. It doesn't have to be a financial thing. That's great if that you're in a position to do that and that's what God's leading you right. to do. But it's it's so much more than that. And I think it really is a mindset of how we view others. Absolutely. That it's not just something I'm, that it is action, but it, it, it becomes who I am. It becomes that organic default mode because I view others through the lens of Christ. I view others as image bearers of God that he loved and that he sacrificed for. So why, if I see people the way that God sees people, even those that I have the most difficult time trying to relate to, if I try and see people the way that he sees them, then why would I not wanna show them love and kindness? Why, why would I not want to offer them what he offered me? And I love what you said about making sure that it's in our heart first, because I think, like we said at the beginning, a big part of the fruit of the spirit is abiding in Christ because the more time we spend with him and the more time we build intimacy and closeness with him, the more work he does in us to help us view the world differently. You know, they say hurt people, hurt people, but healed people, healed people. Right. And so when I take the time to let God, to really receive his love, to receive his kindness into my own life, then it will be easier to offer that to others. Um, and I think that's a really big part of it because what we believe about God matters. It's something we say all the time around here, at least I say it all the time around here. <laughs> and, and so do you believe that God is loving? Do you believe that God is kind? Because if you believe in God, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus, then what you believe about him matters. And sometimes we struggle to show love and kindness because we have yet to re fully receive that from God because somewhere in us, maybe because of experience, maybe because of past hurt, maybe because of bad teaching, whatever, I don't know your life. But be because of those things, we've built this view of God that we don't really believe that he's kind. Right. We don't really believe that he's good or that he loves us. And so we struggle to give that to others because our relationship with God is based on like fear and punishment. And so like, then I want to make everyone else afraid and punish them. <laughs> and, and so spending that time and really, like you said, getting it into our own heart so that we have something to give others that looks a little bit more like Jesus. Right, because in my past relationship with my ex-boyfriend, um, I came to a point where my cup was empty. It was dry. And I literally just could not give anything more. And I tried and I tried and I tried and it was failing. It was falling. And so it led to like a breakup and I literally needed that time to replenish and refill. And it was really good. And it was a teaching moment for me to never, like never abandon that filling. Like even when like, it's not like you get filled up and then you're, like, good for a while. Like, it's a continuous thing. It's good. Like, you have to receive and then you have to give. And it's not something that we can just do part of the time in our relationship with Christ. It's something we have to do, you know, daily and weekly and something that we need. That's so good. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, you know, I think you hit it right on, Brooklyn, in that receiving aspect. And I think it's, you know, it starts with the view of yourself, you know, really think about yourself and give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Don't just assume the worst, um, not only in yourself, but about the people out there. Um, I know for me, that's one thing that I always get up and I always want to give others the benefit of the doubt. And I'm a big sports person. And so some of my sports people out there that are listening, mm. you'll understand this. But like right now, of course, in, in baseball, we're talking a lot about these prospects that are coming up and they're getting ready to play and have their first experience and all this stuff. And they're prospects because they see the potential star that this person could be. It's not, they're not there yet. And I think that's the mentality that we have to take with individuals, not even, not even just people outside, but ourselves, understanding that I'm a prospect here, that I, I haven't arrived, I haven't become that's the good. star 
that I'm supposed to be, but I'm on my way. And God views me as a prospect, not as a failure, not as something that is a project to be worked on, but that I'm a, he sees the star in me and I just have to walk that out. And I think it's important for us to view the people around us in that way is instead of looking at them as broken and hurting and they need something, it's no, they're, they're a star. They're on their yeah. way. They're a prospect. And, and, and that'll change the way you have conversation. That'll change Absolutely. the way that you treat them. It'll change the way you think about yourself, the way you talk about yourself, just by simply making that type of a shift. Right, because we all are poor in spirit. Right. We all need Jesus. And we need him just as much on our thousandth day as we did on day one or day negative one. <laughs> and we forget that as believers sometimes. And so we want to judge those who don't yet know Jesus based on where we're at now after meeting Jesus, instead of remembering that once upon a time, we didn't have him either and we didn't know him either. And so really taking the time to view him or to view others from that same lens that we are all on an even playing field. Like you said, we have not arrived and we need, like the one thing we do need is Jesus and we all need him. And the way that we're gonna help lead others to him is kindness. That's, that's just, it's one of the ways that we take someone by the hand and show them Jesus, that we take them by the hand. And like our pastor has been saying recently as he talks a lot about Psalm 23, is we take them by the hand and we lead them to green pastures and we lead them to still waters. You can't make them eat or drink, we lead them there. And I think having that mindset of seeing others as you know, co-sheep, like we're all sheep mm. and we all need Jesus, we all need that shepherd and I can't make you want him. I can't make you follow him, but I certainly can do my best effort to show you a Jesus that you would want to follow that you would want a Jesus that loves you, a Jesus that you feel that love coming and go, man, if, that, if that's what Jesus is all about, I want that. It's not easy. It doesn't always feel good. We're not talking about something that's super comfortable all the time. We're not talking about something that just feels good and pleasant as unicorns and rainbows and like <laughs> sprinkles all the time. Sometimes it's hard and it's sacrificial and it's uncomfortable and it's inconvenient, but his way is better. And when I realize that I need him and I view myself again through that lens, what you believe about God matters because what you believe about God determines what you believe about yourself and what you then in turn believe about others. And so we've got to be, like you said, filling that cup up daily. Because if I wait until I'm depleted and then get filled up again, I'm going to cause a lot of damage in the meantime. And I'm going to get real tired right. and real cranky, right? <laughs> and I'm going to find it real hard to love because I'm empty and I'm dry. But if I'm going to Jesus regularly and being reminded of who he is and getting a clear picture of who he is, because he is love and he is joy and he is peace and he is patience and he is kindness. And when I get that clear picture of him, I get a clear view of who I am who he sees me to be with is who is someone who is destitute and impoverished without him, but with so much potential with him, then I can also offer that to others. Cause I, ha I have a greater ability to see others in the same way with the same compassion, with the same grace in which he sees me. Absolutely. And there's benefits. I mean, when you're kind statistics and science will tell us, that it changes you internally. And so, you know, maybe the focus shouldn't be on the outcome of the other person, but it can help, you know, some of the chemicals in your body that get released during uh, acts of kindness and things like that can help lower your depression, your anxiety, your stress. Um, it's proven that when you are kind to people, it does create a unique bond with that person. Not that it's going to be this lasting generational friendship, <laughs> But yeah. it does it does do something for us physically too that relaxes and calms us, and so there are benefits not only just in the spiritual realm, but to help us be people of peace and hope and just loving kindness in that regard, just by taking these steps. Yeah, yeah. I think like humanity is such a broken but beautiful thing. Um, 
there's just so many different people and we're all so different. We all struggle with so many different things. And sometimes it's hard to see that. So we may look at a person and go, oh my gosh, like they have the best life and I'm just so jealous I'm going through this. But then they're looking at you saying, oh my gosh, I wish I had that about her. Yeah. Like compare and compete, you live in defeat. Absolutely. And it's just so important to never put anybody on a pedestal, Yeah. to look at everybody on a level playing field. And that's why kindness plays such a big factor because it shows like we're equal, we're in the same fight yeah. and we're... We're trying to go for the same thing every single day. Absolutely. Love it. Just putting, kind of being Christ-centered and others-centered. Because when we're me-centered, we struggle way more. Our mental health, like Brian said, our mental health struggles, it's it's a big deal. And it's so hard because we're not wired to be selfless. <laughs> we're we're wired to be selfish and to satisfy ourselves first and to think of ourselves first. So it's so counter to who we are, but it's so good and it's such a blessing. And so I would just encourage you who are listening to maybe take time and do like a kindness assessment <laughs> on yourself and and not and first start with how do you view Jesus? Maybe take some time and ask that question. Do you really believe that God is kind and that it is his kindness that led us leads us to repentance. Was it his kindness that led you to repentance? And then take some time trying to be kind to yourself and receive that kindness um, in yourself. And then look at what you can offer others to be kind. What does that look like? And it can start with those small steps. It can start with being nice, but be willing to take it deeper. Be willing to take it further. As you spend time with God, it's really kind of letting his love pour out of you is I think what kindness is. It's his love in action. Thanks so much for listening to What Matters Most. I'm Fawn Ellerbrook, the communication director at Faith Community and the producer of The Pod. Today's episode is part of a series discussing the fruit of the Spirit. It's meant to cultivate conversation around the ways God works these characteristics and disciplines and perspectives into us as we surrender ourselves to His way. It's how we live empowered as followers of Christ and share His love with the world around us. You can check the episode show notes for any resources and links mentioned in this podcast and for ways to connect with Faith Community. If you enjoyed this episode, we would be so grateful if you would leave a review and share it on social media. This helps us reach more people with the hope the gospel has to offer right where they're at. And pro tip, subscribe wherever you're listening so you're the first to know when the next episode drops. Thank you again for being here and for listening to this conversation. I pray that you are encouraged on your own journey of growth as we all continue to discover what matters most.